you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the moment the price was paid your Bible, my Bible says he made a public show of them, triumphing over them. Now watch this. When he shook off the demons and the cohorts of darkness, he went to Lucifer himself who collected the keys from Adam and he said, give me the keys. It's in your Bible. When he collected the keys, he said, I am he that was dead and now is alive. Revelations 1. And I have the keys. Then Apostle Peter now brought another dimension. He went to Hades, the place of the dead. And the Bible said he preached the gospel to the departed saints who were there. Awaiting this redemption. They died in faith. But they never had the opportunity to make that declaration. And when they believed him. He opened the prison gates and said, let's go. It's in your Bible. Now watch this. I can imagine the whole land quiet, women crying, others laughing, others mocking. Shame on Jesus. You wasted three years of our passion. We thought you were the one who would dethrone Herod, Caesar to become king. And then one morning, hmm, the Bible says... There was a noise an angel came and rolled away the stone and sat on it and the king of glory your king of glory watch this you would think when he was done with satan that was the end of it now it was time to return to the earth psalm 24 but the gates refused to open those gates and doors you see because Jesus was about to do something on earth that had never been done. Watch this. When someone leaves the earth, someone in the earth has to call him back. Are we together? That is the law. It has to be a human who calls someone from the realm of the spirit back. When Lazarus died, remember? It took Jesus the man. It took Ezekiel the man. To call back life into the bones. Now who was calling Jesus that he was returning back? So the gate said no. We are not opening. There is nobody on earth who is calling you. That's why they ask the question. Who is this king of glory? He said lift up your heads. O ye gates. And be ye lifted ancient doors. That the king of glory may come in. Now listen please. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. This is an issue of ownership because Psalm 24 verse 1 starts by saying the earth is the Lord. The fullness. So it's, an, it's a contention for space and ownership. Watch this. Please listen. I don't want you to miss this. The gates said we only open at the command of someone who is in the earth who calls because that was how God created it but now there is no man in the earth who is calling your name and there was a response to those gates he said this man is the Lord strong and mighty then he says the Lord mighty in battle mighty in battle and the gates open and he triumphed he walked back into his domain because if you are really the owner if it is yours you should have the power to go out and come in every other king who claimed land when he went out he could not come in but here is this other king, the king of glory. He went out of the earth of his own volition and returned back. When he returned back, he was alive by the spirit. Now watch this. 
when he resurrected now he could be ascended to heaven so that that coronation service would now happen to him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool are we together now the bible says that a name was given to him that name means an office this is how he got the name the name was his all the while but now it was his without man it's like you being a professor but because you are a professor alone you will strip yourself and go back to the elementary school and start again but this time around you do not want the PhD for you alone you want the PhD together with everybody you love so that the day they give you a PhD they see a PhD appearing in every other person's name that's what Jesus did now I want you to listen very carefully if Jesus himself was not exempted from battles that's the point I'm driving I'm showing you all the things you thought is it that Jesus did not pray is it that Jesus did not fast is it that Jesus did not submit to mentorship what was his sin that he went through these battles it was not about a sin problem it was about a destiny problem I wish I can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny I wish I can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence but I would be lying to you there is a price the price for where you are going listen carefully the price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. It is the reason why many people begin to run a marathon when they shoot the gun. Sometimes they are up to 50. Some already know they will not finish. But you find a few people just running, maintaining that tempo. And after hours and hours of running, they are still moving. And at the end, just one person reaches the finish line. And he's done. Let me tell you this. Ask your man of God the storms that he has had to go through in his own life as a testament. I can tell you stories upon stories that will make you cry. This man standing before you is a testament of blood dripping on the altar. Make no mistakes about it. This is a sermon that many people in church, they do not like to hear this. It's why we claim many things that never happen. Because not everything in the spirit is a gift. There are realms that are rewards. There are rewards for enduring. It says that he that endures to the end will receive a crown and a white stone. Hallelujah. Read about Abraham. Do you know what it meant to be barren for 25 years? Then on top of that, your maid now has a child. And then on top of that, your child is born. And when he's 12 years, God says, go and kill him. Not let him be killed. You kill him. The Bible says he got up early. You would think that the barren, the 25 year barrenness problem would be the last challenge Abraham would ever have. No. Abraham, look at the trouble that came with Lot. Look at all the troubles that happened. How about the young man Joseph? What wrong did the young man do? He just went to bed like you did and had a dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. And the first trouble in his life came from his brothers. They threw him in a well. I wondered what he was saying in that well. Lord, what am I doing here? I love you. When you love the Lord and yet you are in a well. I will tell you what to do shortly. I hope this message is blessing you. Mm. Mm. There are some cups you don't pray to pass over you. You only pray for grace to drink it. 
But if it is to sit down, remember the disciples were trying to lobby politically for a position on Jesus' left and right. And the mother came, you know, women came and said, look, my sons are here. Would you consider them? Jesus said, the space is available. But here's the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? All the disciples who said, I will go with you, go and find out what happened to them. Peter, who was in a rush to say, no, I, I won't deny you indeed. This thing called destiny and this thing called enlargement is not a Pentecostal issue. It's not just an issue of saying, yes, I will go. It's wonderful. But I need you to really understand. It's the reason why so many people profess it sincerely and yet never come there. It's not because God is unjust. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world of men. And if you do not build stamina or capacity, there are many doors that God will keep closed to help you as an act of his love for you. Because he has vetted you and said, listen, I can't bring this burden on this person. You can't go through it. When they brought Joseph out of the well, I'm sure Joseph will say, this is the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. It's over. Only for him to know that he's been sold for 30 shekels. My brother selling me? Okay, fine. He now goes to the house of Potiphar and then God begins to bless him. The Bible strangely tells him he's a prosperous man, favored of God. I'm sure he was comfortable. Things were already working out now. And then here comes this woman. Are we together? Yes. She comes to him. What was his sin? He was handsome. What if what is good in your life becomes a reason for your pain? His dream took him to the well. His looks put him to the prison. Just because I am a handsome man, when has beauty become a sin? And the wife came. And listen carefully. They had every evidence against Joseph, not every evidence is evidence because clearly her cloth was with him. How could you deny now? And he took Joseph to the prison. Now, listen carefully the prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't conclude on anybody you see in the prison. The moment you find people in a prison, be careful. Because the prison is the launching pad. Read your Bible for glory. Whether you are Paul and Silas. Whether you are Jesus yourself. Are we together? Whether you are Joseph. After the prison. The moment you see anyone in the prison. Start celebrating. Listen. What I'm teaching you for many of you. You will not need this message now. It's after two years from now. You will look for this tape in a hurry and listen to it one night and say, now I understand. You don't need light in the day. You only need light in the night. Now, please listen carefully. Joseph is in the prison together with other people. If they told you, who is the person in the prison? is all these criminals. But there was somebody who was a king there. He was about to be literally the possessor of the entire Egypt and he was there and when the time was full he had endured do you know the test he went through in prison the test of joy the test of relevance the test of value that he never counted God unfaithful he saw two people his own contemporaries sad and he said your countenance what's wrong and he began to interpret the dreams. And then the king called one. And he said, please, when you go to the king, advocate my innocence. And the guy said, don't worry. I have your back covered. He thought it would be after 24 hours. They'll say, suddenly, you are innocent. Come out. Two days became two weeks. Became two months. Became two years. How could I be so close to victory? 
and one man's carelessness adds two more years the guy forgot but did he really forget no prophecy was playing out when it was time for him to come out of the prison listen you do not know why God kept him in that prison let me tell you one of the reasons why God kept Joseph in that prison he did not keep him there he hid him there the kind of glory Joseph had they would have killed him before the day of his rising what looks like a negative thing Moses when you find yourself being abandoned in Egypt you are hidden you did not miss your path there are many times God uses negative circumstances God does not cause evil but there are many times he can use it as a tool if he finds room to bear his glory he can hide you in the midst of circumstances that distract you from exposing yourself too early so that you can last until the time prophecy is ready to release you to announce you are we together and the king had a dream and the heavens were shot over the wise men and the sorcerers and the necromancers and the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon that night if he had known that would be his last night in prison that by the next day he would be a prime minister do you know if the man remembered to tell pharaoh about joseph they would have brought joseph out and he would have gone back to potiphar's house They would have said all right sorry for everything compensate him no labor for two weeks after that he can continue we know that he was in the prison two years plus the years he spent before his encounter with the wine presser we don't know how long that was but he remained there there are mountains there are challenges that sometimes can last listen to me you must obtain the staying power the staying power one time i was praying for a couple this is a true story they were trusting god for the fruit of the womb and please sit down when i was praying for them and the lord opened my eyes and i saw three children running around true story running around and playing and then the next time they entered a car all of them as a family and they were going somewhere and they had a ghastly motor accident and I saw that everybody died and then I came back to myself I said how many children do you have he said we don't have any children you've never had children yes I said okay how long have you been married maybe eight nine years thereabout never <clears throat> at best I've had miscarriages then I understood the vision I said what you call delay was God preserving a kind of pain from you listen beloved people there are many times in your life that your pain is your gift this is a difficult message to understand but pain can be a gift if you get to heaven today and you are looking for Jesus there are many ways to know him if you use the crown alone there are many elders who have crowns tell everyone to lift their hands there is a scar that only Jesus has what was an object of shame yesterday is now the symbol of his glory and royalty there are times that warriors will be summoned and called and your scar will be the only reason to be allowed to pass through certain doors if you have not gone through certain things even when they call for employment on certain offices they say we need certain experience you must have you had an experience with ABC then they say you can go Joseph came out of that prison not with the plans of remaining I'm sure he was out to just interpret and go back and when he spoke to the king in a moment Genesis 40 
Genesis 41. He was exalted in one day. One day. He said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that I am above you. But as far as administration over Egypt is concerned, it will be at your word. And immediately he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And he was given great possessions. I wonder what happened the day the exalted Joseph saw Potiphar's wife. Hello, madam, how are you? Hello, sir. What you meant for me for evil. It was a journey. He told his brothers. Listen. Before you start your journey to greatness, there is a scripture that you must keep at the back of your mind. For we know that all things, not some things, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. I'm not a chef. But many of you cook. There are ingredients that you do not want to taste before you put in the food. It is very inconveniencing. When you are peeling your onion, sometimes tears will come out of your eyes. That is the price you have to pay for being so close to it. Are we together? Watch how you make a lovely meal. Sometimes you add sugar. Sometimes you add this. Sometimes you add that. And you already know what you are trying to combine. Sometimes you have to leave certain ingredients under fire for a long time. There are others who don't need that much fire. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you add this. Then you close the pot. Then you open it again. And what you have, when you put it on a beautiful tray and you serve, when people taste it, they say, my what is this? But find out how it was made. There are other things, chicken and the rest, you have to marinate for hours. Is that true? And live there. Lonely path. All things work together. He didn't say all good things. All tears. All pain. They work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes. For many years in ministry, I had the resources to buy a vehicle, but the Lord would not allow me to buy a vehicle. I was... I cannot tell you how many times the Lord made me empty my accounts and I did things that did not make sense. There was a time my account was hacked and quite some serious money was taken out of it. I went to the bank to meet with the managers and all the people there. Now, I was a righteous man by the grace of God and I love the Lord. I sat there at the meeting and the people, look, you have all the people who stay close to you, they must write a statement, you know, police and all of that. And I said, no, these people are sincere. Say, well, that's none of our business. We are doing our work. And I sat down there in the midst of all of that. You can't imagine how the millions I had lost. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, son, what are you doing here? In the middle of a meeting, I said, I mean, my money, they just use these guys just. And the Lord said, who owns it? And I said, you are the one I'm a steward. Listen, 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 listen. And he said, if it, if it is true that you've given me everything, get up from that meeting and walk away. God is my witness. I looked at them and I said, all right, thank you for everything. Let the money go. No, 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 no. This is our reputation. I said, listen, this is my money. I have chosen to forget about everything. And that's it. When I walked out of that bank, there was a joy that I could not explain. There are some things you cannot understand until you are in certain situations. That 
joy. You would think that would be the end of it. Many years ago, it was in the seminary, I was diagnosed of a very strange fungal infection. It started eating up my head. It was a very serious situation. I thought it was just a little, maybe some issue that antibiotics and the rest will solve the problem. But it metamorphosed into something very serious. I got to a point where they could not allow me sit in front because it was inconveniencing people. No matter how early I came for a program, I would have to go to the back. Now, the students love me, sincere people, but there was a time I had to wait. While people are at the dining hall, I would have to wait. After food is shared, my portion will be brought for me. They prepared a solution that I would have to rub on my head in the morning and then soap or something in the night. If I forgot to put it one day, it will show. Sometimes there will not be water and I would have to stand in the rain. Look, let me tell you the truth. Don't claim titles, so I am apostle, I am prophet. Let your scars. He said, let no man trouble me. Hallelujah. I remember the pain and the discomfort. One time they, I went to the lab and they had to take some sample. It was so painful to culture it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be You waited, you waited, you waited. God gave an instruction to go for a crusade. We were just starting. We prayed and we fasted and fasted and fasted. We now went for the crusade, anointed but broke. You would think excelling in one area will cover for the deficiency of another area. Are we together? Preach the gospel with power. There were not many people who were gathered, sincerely speaking. That was the first disappointment, but I was happy at least we were starting. Not more than 50 people. People look at me today and say, Apostle, there is a grace upon you that does this and that. Let me tell you how it came. People don't just listen to you. No. You see, we're opening up these cars for you so that you will know when people honor people, it's not human worship. They are not honoring just the human vessel. They are honoring a man who is a compendium of victory, sacrifice, endurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know when we got there, the money to pay for the hotel, to pay for the sound, I asked the sound people to come. It was on credit. Imagine you are a sound man and I'm a preacher shouting the faithfulness of God on a crusade ground. Preaching that God can do everything. There are times you have to preach the truth even if your life does not yet have the results. Because you are, you are bound, listen, you are bound by a covenant to be truthful to God's people. Regardless your experience, you must stand for that truth. I'm showing you a price. It's a serious price. I was done preaching. When the crusade was over, everybody was happy. There were bills and bills. There was no way. They didn't have anybody that you can call and say, help me. The sound people said, listen, we came here and 
I had to plead with them, look for someone who got some amount to give them, and I promised them, just give me a little time. You can imagine, how do you, I mean, on one hand, you are celebrating healings and miracles, but on, where is the God who raised somebody, the, a blind eye opened? How much is the bill that he cannot pay? So when we sing today that God is faithful, for me, it's not a special number. There are many stories that make that song come alive. Let me show you from where the anointing flows. The anointing flows through the allowance that your scars have created. Are we together? I remember one time the sound people were sad, they were angry, and they are threatened that, listen, this thing was going to become a police case. I was not a criminal. It was the gospel I was preaching. The apostle you celebrate today by the grace of God, I'm telling you some of the stories. Immediately after that tragedy, God helped us, we paid, and the next year God said, go for a crusade again. And sometimes God will act as if he is not aware, as if he's not aware of everything that happened to you. You failed in a business and you went to complain and say, Lord, I just lost a million dollars, two million dollars. And he says, that's all right. Next week, start again. God for you. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. Hallelujah. But after that time and that season, God opened me up to a realm of glory and grace. I told you for many years, God would not allow me to buy a car. What is it about a car? Oh God, at least to help my mobility. The day I instruct you, I will never forget people will come and meet me with the seed of a car and I'll say, Lord, is this it? And you say, pray for them bless them and let them go back with it what a man of God but the day God began to bless me and to open up doors for me I'm not saying this to brag I hope you are learning I began to see levels of the anointing and levels of grace and the Lord spoke to me and said, because you survived this, all these things and glorified me in it, I will give you the keys of nations. The keys of territories. Listen, there are positions you don't get politically. No. You are enthroned by his grace. And when God puts you there, the nations know. And listen, you are given authority to lift others too. One time, before the Lord would break me into the realm of wealth and abundance, I was praying. Maybe you've heard me share it. Minding my business, interceding for myself and God's people. Suddenly my eyes is open from my room and I see this creature looking like a dinosaur. Giant eyes. One of the eyeballs was like the human head. Two of that. Having a tail that could be detached from itself. And it was looking at me with fierce anger. And he said, so you think you can bring God's people into abundance? I had seen the spirit that sits over the finances of people. This is not the issue of business or buying and selling. When I speak over your life and your finances change, let me tell you where the anointing came from. It didn't just come from claiming. It came from deep spiritual encounters. So, when, when it's time to pray and release mantles and graces, you would do it because of God, but you will also have a bit of respect and regard for the vessels. Are we together now? Not everybody fakes power. Oh, my people, let me tell you the truth. There are people who have met God genuinely. They have a covenant with God and God has chosen to honor them. For their name, for his namesake. 
and he has done all of that for the sake of his people now please hear me there are spirits that follow men there are spirits that follow offices there are spirits that follow mantles there are spirits that follow programs listen carefully listen carefully we're about to pray now we are now really talking about warfare there are spirits that follow men once you are in Christ once you are a human being the devil has a chance over you and he will try to do everything that is their jurisdiction but there are spirits that follow offices that means the day you find your place in destiny the operation of those spirits are activated they don't follow you as an individual they don't care your name they are just interested in the office that you occupy there are spirits that follow mantles you see they don't follow men they follow mantles so when a mantle comes upon you you have to understand how to deal with those spirits i said it yesterday now there are sides to the understanding of things like deliverance and warfare that may not be scriptural but there are sides that is very very scriptural and if you do not understand this in this end time you'll be in trouble i need to say this so we pray hallelujah when jesus went to pray and fast satan left everything on earth and was fasting with jesus too as soon as jesus was done fasting the first person he saw was satan there are some fasts that don't drive him away there are some fasts that bring him who is this person who is this what kind of prayer and consecration is this listen you would think that jesus full of the holy ghost full of the word full of prayer satan would come and be shaking under the anointing and there is satan standing as soon as jesus is done he now looks at him and says all right i've been waiting you are hungry don't deny it you are hungry turn this stone to bread and he said it is written then the bible says that he took him to a holy city and said fall down for it is written he shall keep his angels charge over you they will bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone then the bible says he took him into help her please help her he took him into an exceeding high mountain hallelujah and showed him the glories of the world in a moment of time and said bow to me and i will give you because it was given to him he said get the hands and satan left him for a season that's what your bible says the next time satan would come to him he did not come to him directly again he came to him through the compassion of peter Peter began to talk prohibiting him from dying and he looked and said get it behind me Satan it's still you even though speaking through a compassionate man and he said Peter Satan has desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not that when thou art converted strengthen your brethren the next time he would come he came through a man who was already a victim of greed his treasurer you've heard me say it that God is still looking for treasurers. His last treasurer disappointed him. That space is still vacant. So when you say you want to be his treasurer, it would take more than financial understanding for him to give you that position. Because the last one had financial intelligence. The problem was his heart. So the training of a treasurer starts from the heart. Listen. When Elijah showed up carrying the mantle, the spirit of the Antichrist activated Jezebel. Are we together? Under the reign of Jezebel, the prophets of Baal excelled and the prophets of God suffered. It was time for Elijah to deal with it and said, listen, let's go to Mount Carmel. Let's settle this once and for all. If Baal be God, then let him be served. If God be God, let him be served. Say warfare when they went to mount carmel he said i will start with you call upon your god and do everything you know to do and they called from morning till night nothing happened and he said get 
get away now let it be my turn when it was time for the evening sacrifice the bible says he rebuilt the altar placed the sacrifice poured water upon it and called upon the god of heaven and fire came from heaven lit everything and they ran they chased the prophets of baal killed every one of them if you are samson because you are a warrior and you are a deliverer there is a spirit that is activated in delilah is the spirit of seduction the assignment of seduction is to use your need to distract you listen carefully seduction is not seduction until it thrives on something you really want legitimately the operation of delilah is not lost the operation of delilah is not immorality the operation of delilah is using a need that you have to distract you that's what happened to samson every day she would come to samson and say what is the secret of your strength then he would tell her something else then she would try it you would think that samson after two or three times he should say you are an evil lady it was not about the physical person something was happening in the realm of the spirit as soon as the hair of samson was caught the first thing that happened was they plucked his eyes hallelujah when elijah returned back in john the baptist jezebel returned back in herodias and they caught john john became angry offended at jesus to the point that he died a very cheap death as a birthday gift listen very carefully if you are the apostles of the lamb then get ready for the government that is what will fight you for the apostles of the lamb it was not women or business people it was the government so when you say i am an apostle or a prophet over the territory don't just laugh master the art of surviving the assaults of government there are many people who just enter territories and say god has sent me here congratulations do you know the spirit that fights the apostles and the prophets if you are a businessman listen carefully it is still the manifestation of jezebel go and read revelations 18 revelations 19 that she goddess that rides upon the horse it was because of her fornication with the kings of the earth that they have worked valiantly through their merchandise with her why am i teaching you the concept of warfare because you need to understand that your call your mantle and your stand for jesus christ has an implication in the realm of the spirit and the devil will do all within his power south africa please hear me there are controlling powers this is not our subject otherwise i would have taught you in details the, the administration the organogram and how nations come under siege nations do not come under siege just through policies hallelujah the secret of surviving warfare listen carefully is to understand the art of prayer and intercession if you do not understand the mystery of priesthood there are certain heights that you cannot attain unto hallelujah there are many levels and cadres when it has to do with the prayer ministry there are people that the bible calls watchmen there are people that the bible calls intercessors they all have their roles i have set watchmen he said i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what you will say to me there is a level in prayer where when you rise to by reason of your rising in the spirit god can trust you with what is happening to nations so that you can see and stop or allow at that listen at that point you have become a gatekeeper in the spirit hallelujah when it was time to destroy sodom and gomorrah 
God had to come and seek the cooperation of Abraham. Is that in your Bible? He said, shall I hide these things from Abraham? There are people God does not hide things from. When God wants to do something over South Africa, he comes to them and says, this is what I want to do. And they can say, Lord, if you do this, you will destroy both the innocent and the guilty. So I stand by reason of my office and I plead for your mercy to hang on. Please listen to me. Not everyone is a preacher. There are people who have become watchers over territories. They have become the eyes of God, supervising the progress of his work and his program across territories. Can I tell you the truth? When God wants to honor you, you will encounter Jesus. But you must encounter those graces to rise in that territory. Ignore them out of pride, you will suffer for nothing. It's true. It's an honor God has given them. We're talking about enlargement. There are people if you ignore in South Africa as far as the program of God is concerned, you will be born again but you will suffer in a way that will surprise you. Because God has exalted them and placed an unction upon them. They have become carriers of keys that open up territories. And that includes government. Is someone learning? Warfare. When God wants to help you, he shortens the distance between you and this man. So that your access to them would come in a hurry. Oh, Saul, you will keep roaming around till the day you meet this mysterious personality called Samuel. A man whose word does not fall to the ground. What kind of a man is that? Abraham, even though there's prophecy upon you, you will keep wasting your time till you meet Melchizedek, the king of Salem. These men you see have become systems. They are not just men. They are flesh and blood. But certain covenants have elevated them to a position in the spirit. Recognized by heaven and recognized by hell. Because they have survived certain things. Please listen. Listen. Now, there, I'm not talking about a false sense of human worship and some of these things. No, this is not what we advocate. But let me tell you the truth. I will be lying to you. If I tell you all men are the same. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But the sacrifices. The depths that people have explored in the realm of the spirit. And the treasures they have found in doing business with God in deep waters. Has elevated them to a position where they have held keys. Keys that open and close the gates of nations. Let me tell you this when god makes you a gatekeeper the nations will know it's not something you announce and say i am all, all that is nonsense they can swing wide the gates of men's destinies heater and teeter and the heavens will open there is a do not miss tonight i want to show you tonight we're looking at the prophetic dimension there are deep things I'm going to show you. But hear me, brothers and sisters. Let me give you three keys very quickly and we'll wrap up. Three keys that help you to be able to war a good warfare as far as your destiny is concerned. I will not explain them, I will just list them. Number one, discernment. The first key you will need in the art of warfare is discernment the ability to perceive spirits the ability to interpret the writings on the wall so that you do not call good evil and call evil good there are many many things that carries the semblance of evil but they are actually sent for your blessing so you are not praying and binding things that are consistent with where god is taking you to you need discernment there are many many prayers that if they are to be answered, you will not rise. So God, as an act of his mercy, just allows you just to keep exploring your knowledge there while he remains consistent with his program for you. 
you would have called the lion's den a negative place for Daniel. You would have called the fire a negative place for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The second key that helps you to survive warfare as far as destiny is concerned is joy. Listen, joy is a deep mystery in the spirit. Joy is not happiness. Uh -uh. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is a revelation. He says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. One of the ways that you know that a season is about to be opened for you is joy. There is a baptism of joy. There is no physical evidence that should warrant that kind of joy. But your spirit has picked something. Listen, for many of you, you are in that season right now. There is nothing physical as it were. But your spirit man has gotten something. Gotten something. Ah, lay hold on it. Lay hold on it. Don't lose it for anything. Doesn't matter what is happening. Because that joy is your strength. Key number two. Every time you are in negative seasons, listen, don't start praying and binding and casting foolishly. No, I'm not saying that as an insult. You need to discern. This writing on the wall, it looks like evil, but Lord, speak to me. everything that carries a semblance of evil we pray and bind it no 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 you will delay your rising discernment and then joy joy lord i do not understand what is happening i just lost my job but joy 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 like a river so you are laughing and they say how about the rents do you have it now i don't have it but something the spirit of god is welling up joy sometimes you need to lock your door and dance alone and rejoice alone and dance alone it may not make sense hallelujah the bible says why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that the kings of the earth set themselves against the Lord and his anointed. And the Bible says God will look from heaven and laugh. Before he now administers judgment. Listen. We do not reap with joy. We reap in joy. That means your food is in the kitchen. You will have to enter the kitchen to get the food. If there is no joy for you, there is no harvest lose anything but not your joy mm -mm. key number three we have to pray the third key are you ready now the third key that you need is the power of prophetic intercession ah yes sir the spirit of prayer must come on someone today not just not listen help them please Help them, please. I release that grace upon you. I release that grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. The art of the altar. The ability to hold on to the horns of the altar. Take that grace. Receive it as a mantle. In the name of Jesus. The ability to pray the program of God. Not just give me tea and give me bread. No controlling the gates of destinies in the place of prayer power with God I stretch my hands take that grace in the name of Jesus Christ take that grace help this man take that grace take that grace I stretch my hands towards you Take that grace. Receive that grace. Let it come upon you like the dew of Hammon. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help them please. I'm releasing it again. 
the mantle of prophetic prayer the art of the altar take it take it now take it now take it now take it now receive that grace Allah de ke barakato shagre ke seme ne ke te barakato shagre ke te barakato skati kate. Begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Shali ke ne baras. Can I pray for you? I don't know this man, but there is a grace that is coming upon you. I stretch my hands upon you. May that mantle come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will wax valiantly, says the Spirit of God. Valiantly, you will do mighty things for Him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen. Please listen. We're about to round up. Can I tell you this? Those who do not know how to pray the program of God for their lives and for nations will only allow these spirits prevail and keep aborting destinies. There is a grace for prophetic intercession. It's not a mechanical thing, no. Where are the intercessors in South Africa? I decree and declare at the count of three, any one of you called into the office of a watcher and an intercessor, may this mantle activate that office at the count of three, one, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that heaven. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I quicken the spirit of the watcher. I quicken the spirit of the intercessor. Arise over South Africa. Pray the program of God. Stay the power of darkness. Open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute. The program of God in South Africa, the program of God over your destiny is at the mercy of your understanding the art of priesthood, the mysteries of the altar. This is where we control the climate over territories. destiny over house of treasures over South Africa let the king of glory we command a triumphant entry a new season of enlargement of increase over the program of God over the purposes of God over the destinies of men Hallelujah. Please hear me. South Africa, hear me. Listen to me. I submit to you by the spirit of grace that if the altar of prayer suffers in your land, the program of God will also suffer. It does not matter what goes right. If prayer goes wrong, everything will go wrong. In the book of Daniel, Daniel was not a prayer warrior. Daniel was a politician. But there was an angle of an intercessor and a watcher 
the spirits of the Medes and the Persians govern the land of Babylon and a parliament had to pass a bill to stop prayer for 30 days let it not be that under your watch South Africa goes down spiritually let it not be that under your watch South Africa goes down financially goes down as far as the program of God is concerned please hear me please hear me please hear me in one minute my time is up you are going to declare over your destiny the two lift gates of my destiny a fata be open for the new season go ahead and pray the two lift gates I part you hither and thither. it's time for a new season man of God pray for your ministry pray for the program of God it's time for enlargement open up be open financial doors be open ministerial doors be open greater exploits virgin dimensions virgin territories hallelujah 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 praise the lord who is this man yes are you a pastor where 